I think good form when sniping is a three-step process. Step one is to find head level. Put your reticle where you expect your opponent's head to be at all times, in every situation. You can apply this to basically every weapon, on every map, when you're moving around maps. Just try to notice any situation when your reticle is either too low or too high, where it's not at head level, and recorrect it to head level. The more often you can do this, the more prepared you're going to be for any gunfight. Step two is to scope in either on or as close to the target as possible. Because, of course, the closer you scope into that target, the smaller the correction you have to make to hit the shot and the easier the shot, in theory, at least. You could scope wide from the target, and as long as you're confident and aware, you could still very quickly correct and hit the shot. There's more room for error because you have to make more movement on your sticks to do it. On top of the fact that Halo has a descope mechanic. So the more time you spend in this scope, the more time you're recorrecting, the more time your opponent has to shoot you out of scope and force you to miss. So a big part of the reason why you're scoping in close to the target is that you spend as little time in scope as possible. And then try to never scope with your opponent out of your field of view, especially on controller. Depending on how much they're moving and your sensitivity, it can be very tough to even find the target again. So as close as possible. And then step three is to follow through. This is tricky to explain because there's so many ways to do it, whether you're strafing into the shot, letting the opponent walk into it, or flicking into it with the mouse or the right stick. It's ultimately up to you. It takes time and practice and discipline to master it. But we'll talk about it. Essentially, though, try to keep this in mind as kind of like a foundational good form when sniping. You find head level quickly and efficiently. Bring the reticle close to the player, then scope, then follow through. The beauty of the firing range and understanding and being efficient with this concept is it's all one level. So once you found head level, you found it. You don't need to adjust it, right? The only thing you need to think about is moving that right stick left to right and maintaining this head level as you transition from target to target. So this is kind of an exercise to consider when you're in the firing range is to always try to keep your reticle at this level like 99% of the time of course he's going to crouch and I could go out of my way to down flick you know and try to hit him in that circumstance but the point is it's like 99% of the time you're keeping your reticle at that head level and then the next step in efficiency here would be to learn to control your reticle so it only ever moves as much as it needs to when transitioning from target to target recognizing when you're Flicking past and then recorrecting. Ideally, you just want one smooth motion. If he's on the right, you move to the right and then follow through. If he's on the left, you move to the left and then follow through. We'll talk about it more. First, real quick, let's talk about the mechanics behind the shot because your experience sniping is going to vary quite a bit depending on your control scheme. For example, if you're a legacy Halo player like myself, you have to click the right stick in to aim down sight, which is a challenge in itself. You also have to navigate two different scopes. You got your times five and then times 10. And then you click again to descope. So you're looking at one, two, three separate clicks every time you shoot. The difficulty here is learning the discipline to time your scope with your shot. Typically, I scope in close to the target and then I time the second scope with the timing of my trigger pull. Take your time getting the hang of and being efficient doing this because it's important if you are on legacy controls. Click once for scope and then you're clicking and shooting together at the same time as a micro movement. If you do move your right stick, you're moving it the instant before you click and shoot together, and then you click again to leave scope. So it's kind of like a double click that's triggered after you time the click and the shot together. It's complicated. You can also quick scope into a shot by clicking and shooting together for the first scope as well, which is more challenging. You're going to want to use more of your left stick to line that up because, once again, it's very difficult to swing into a quick scope with the right stick and be perfectly accurate with it because you don't quite have that same flexibility that somebody would have with LT aim. If you're scoping with left trigger or holding right click with a mouse, this process is like a joke by comparison. It's just so much easier. It's effortless to just pull the left trigger, go in and out of scope. You don't have to worry about that clicking motion with your thumb as well. So you have full right stick control through the entire follow through of the shot. Like if you're a legacy Halo player, just try this for a second in firing range, switch to LT aim, just try sniping. It's actually crazy just how much flexibility you have once you get the hang of it. So there is definitely an advantage here if you want to embrace it. I know that there's been a new wave of young up-and-coming players that are cracked with LT aim. You don't have to make the switch. I haven't made it. Most top pros still play the legacy way as well. 
there, Halo is just a unique game. There's a de-scope mechanic in Halo. Scoping is not as necessary as it is in other video games. There's a discipline I find behind learning and mastering the limitations behind scoping with the right stick. So it, it is really up to you. There's also other efficient ways to leave the scope. For example, switching weapons. I double tap the Y button to leave scope. I have that mapped to a paddle under my right middle finger. I use a Battle Beaver for this. Battle Beaver paddles are very quick and easy to access, so I can press the button very quickly. I actually press it too much, but any any paddled controller, I think, can give you an advantage here if you're interested in investing in that. If not, you can also claw your index finger to the Y button. There's that option as well. You can actually sprint out of scope also. If you're playing like ranked snipers, for example, you only have a sniper. Sprinting out of scope is a convenient option out of scope. You can reload out of scope. You can also melee out of scope, not as useful, but there's a variety of ways to kind of get out of scope. Or, you know, I've been asking for this for a long time, but 343, if you could just disable the times 10 scope, please let us disable it because it's just not necessary. Like 95% of the time, we don't even use the time, times 10 scope, right? So if this was just gone, then we probably wouldn't even have this issue. It would just be one click in, one click out, but, you know, add it to the list. Basically, there's a lot of nuance here, mechanically speaking, behind the shot itself. Even with LTA, it can be convenient to be able to quickly switch weapons and reload in between shots. And we'll get to that later. Let's talk a bit about the follow through once again. Similar to how there's three steps to good form when sniping, I'd say there's three main ways to approach the follow through to sniping as well. What you're doing with your left stick, your strafe, what you're doing with your right stick, your aimer, and then what the player is doing, your acknowledgement of how the player is moving and working around their options. So left stick, first of all, try to intimately understand all three of these things when you're practicing in the firing range, because they're all kind of simply laid out in front of you. Left stick is sort of the foundation of your aim. It's a great way to make micro adjustments in your aim for very little effort. Any big movement on the left stick is a pretty small effect on the reticle. So just get the hang of walking into shots. That's the beauty of the firing range is once you've set head level, you can just walk yourself into the shot with the left stick and just understand the power that you have and precision that you have in aiming with the left stick. Left stick is also very useful in connecting from target to target. For example, if I kill one player on one side of the screen and there's a player on the other and I flick, but I sort of under flick to the target, I can use my left stick to connect closer so I'm in a more comfortable range to make the final connection, if that makes sense. So I get a kill and then I flick with the right stick to the general location of the player and then use the left stick to do the fine tuning so that I'm ready for the follow up shot with the right stick after. Because you want to make sure you're very precise with the directions you kind of hit with that right stick. The left stick is giving you time and space to do that fine tuning and your sticks are kind of working together to, to give you the most you know comfortable convenient shot to land. Using the right stick and flicking into a shot is tricky and more deliberate. It requires practice, understanding of your sensitivity and an intention. Similar to what I talked about in my previous aim video, this idea of seeing the shot before you fire the shot, kind of seeing the target's head, the distance from your reticle and seeing what that follow through kind of looks like and feels like in your mind and then kind of following through confidently the instant afterwards. And I'm, I'm also using my left stick to set that flick up in advance and I know what it feels like depending on the range like in my mind just based off the experience of doing that if that makes sense you kind of just go through the motion of a lot, a lot and once again for this exercise because you've already set head level you're also limiting the direction you need to flick to strictly left and right so it kind of makes it easier to know what to expect because you've kind of limited what you need to do like you're only ever flicking it to the right and to the left so if you're really kind of limiting things and taking it one step at a time I think you can get really consistent, really fast at, at developing this. And then make sure you consider what the player is doing and that will guide your stick movement. So for example, these, these players are just walking left and right. Because I know this player is walking to the left, it's always a good rule of thumb to set the reticle ahead of the player and let them walk into it to make the shot as easy as possible for you, right? So it's at head level, set it in front. This is giving me time and space. If I want to move the right stick, I can, or I could just let them walk straight into it. They have a couple different variations of whether they, you know, walk and crouch or just crouch in place, but always trying to put your reticle ahead of the player based off your understanding of what they're doing. You're letting the player do the work for you. So the shot becomes easier. Once you've got this down, the ultimate objective I want you to work towards here is to try to get reaction bonuses for every shot. And there's one right there. A reaction bonus happens when you get kills in the fastest possible time. Because there's a, a limit to the rate of fire of the sniper, 
it's humanly possible to get reaction bonuses for every single shot when you play. I can't personally do this every time. You got to be very quick and very efficient with a sniper to get reaction bonuses every time. I'm sure some people could do this, though. You can also play for streaks in endless sniping. You could go for like 100,000. Sometimes I'll just play and just try to rack the score up to at least 100,000. As long as you're hitting shots consistently enough, that score will continue to go up. The fastest way to hit shots if you're really going for a high score, though, is to fire three shots and to time your reload the instant that you fire the third shot. As long as there's at least one bullet in the, the chamber with the sniper or with any weapon, you get a faster reload than if you burn the whole magazine. So keep that in mind that over time, if you can master timing a reload the instant that you fire the third shot, over time, you're going to shoot bullets faster. And again, I have reload mapped to a paddle, so I just kind of hit both together at the same time. And that's, of course, only if you're looking to master the firing range. You don't always need to do this. The main point here is to just understand those fundamentals and get very efficient in hitting quick and accurate snipes. And you can continue to raise the bar on how challenging you make this, even in the firing range. Like next, what you can do is learn to jump shot. You can challenge yourself to quickly and accurately hit snipes while only airborne. Try to rack up points as quickly as you can, or really just take your time to hit some nasty flicks while you're in the air. You'll recognize that it's all going to be in your right stick control. You're going to have to flick in a variety of different directions. You didn't have to just practicing on the ground. But once again, because player movement is so predictable, you've got more time and kind of space to see the shot in your mind and see the follow through and land some nasty flick so you can really kind of manipulate this to your your benefit depending on what you want to work on if that makes sense and then if you want to take this to the maximum level we'll call it the shy way you can curb slide off the sandbag into a jump shot try try this is ridiculous but just try doing this if you jump and land on the sandbag because the surface is uneven if you want to fast slide every time what you want to do is push yourself into this target on the floor it'll level you out so you kind of jump backwards onto the sandbag, push into the target, and then forward and time the slide. You get a fast curb slide every time. The objective here is to curb slide, hit the first snipe, jump backwards twice, hit two more snipes, land on the sandbag, reload, and then time your curb slide with the tail end of the reload so you cut the animation frame and you get a faster slide into your next shot. And then try to hit reaction bonuses. Good freaking luck. Yes, this is nerdy, I know. But the point is, there's so much you can gain on both a fundamental and advanced level in something as simple as a firing range. So put some of the time in here, take what you learn, translate, copy-paste it over to training mode on real maps, and then copy-paste that over to matchmaking, right? Like, And there's so many other elements to good sniping, of course, like good positioning, good game sense, being able to stay calm under pressure as well. But I, I still think, fundamentally, the time you put in here there's no way you don't make gains elsewhere. You don't get transferable skills for other game types, etc. So give this a shot. Add maybe 15 minutes to your grind in the firing range. See if it helps you out. And let me know in the comments if it does end up helping your sniping. If you want to continue to improve at Halo, by the way, I've got an exciting announcement. I am finally offering private coaching. It's been a long time coming. I'm keeping it simple. For now, I've got a Calendly link in the description of this video. There's three options. There is one-on-one -on -one VOD review where we'll watch your gameplay together, together and I'll give you my thoughts on your gameplay. We've got one-on-one -on -one general. This is me and you in a custom game going through mechanics, going through skill jumps, playing octagon, whatever you want to work on individually, one-on-one -on -one there. And then I've got one-on-one -on -one VOD review for commentating as well. Well, I don't currently commentate Halo. It's something I love and, and public speaking is something I've spent the last decade of my life dedicated to improving. So I'm confident I can help you guys out there too. So we'll start there, see where it goes. If you guys are interested, book a session and let's get good at Halo together. Lastly, I also got to give a thank you to my soldiers and Spartans on the way, my Patreon subscribers. I appreciate you all. If you guys like this content, you find it valuable, consider supporting me on Patreon as well. We got little exclusives there. We got our first custom games night as well this Thursday. Otherwise, that's it for the content today. If you guys like this, you want to see more videos just like this one right here. This is the way.